Hello, Deutschlerner! Today I'm here with Carmen and Dennis, and they are here from the German school in St. Louis, and we're going to talk about what it is the German school does, why they are there, and kind of what their target audience is. And then we're also going to talk about German learning in general, whether that be in the St. Louis area or wherever you may be in the world. First, can you give us a little bit of background? Where are you guys from, and how did you learn German? How did you end up at the uh, German school? So I come really from Germany, the southern part of Germany. I'm a native speaker. And um, through work, I was transferred to America. And then I met my husband and I married him. And when I got my work permit, the first thing I did, I applied to the German school to be a teacher. I'm now at the school for 19 years. And for five years, I am the lead teacher in the school. I was born and raised here in St. Louis, majored in German in uh college. Uh, my heritage is German. I went to Germany in my junior year, studied in Freiburg for a year. Then I got a master's and a PhD in German literature from Northwestern University. I taught German for eight years, maybe. Then I got into an entirely different field and didn't do anything with German until about eight years ago. I've been teaching at the school and also a student at the school for six or seven years. You say you're a student still at the school as well? So you're yes. doing like the C-level classes? I do C-level conversation class on Saturday mornings, and I teach a A2 class on Thursday evenings. Do you know um, how the, the German school got started here in St. Louis? Um, I don't know of a whole lot of institutions that are like this. Um, so how did the... How do we have a German school dedicated to German in uh, in the St. Louis area? The school started in 1962 uh, from by refugees. So after the Second World War, they wanted to have their children uh, learn German still. They came from Germany or German-speaking uh, places in Europe. And they started the school. And so we have soon our 60 years anniversary next year. It was always a Saturday school for children, and then we added adults in the 1980s. We are not the only Saturday school all over in America. There are Saturday schools. Uh, so this is not a traditional K-12 school. It's not like you you know, teach all of your classes in German, but it's just Saturday school. I also noticed you have Thursday classes too, right? Saturday is just during the day, 9 to 12 on Saturdays, and it's uh, 30 weeks, so 90 hours of instruction. Thursday evening is 6.30 to 9.30, also 30 weeks. So we run concurrently with the normal school year. And so you are teaching people, uh, you started A1, and you can go all the way up to... C1, C1 is as far as we go, but we also have children starting at kindergarten level. Kindergarten, yeah, yeah. we have two kindergarten classes, and the children go to the B1 level, but the adults can go up to the C1 level. And are these classes targeted at the test that you can take or the exam from like the Goethe Institute or something like that? We are preparing the children for... Two tests, the AATG test. We have applied for permission to run the German government-based test, that is the DSD-1 test, the German Sprachdiplom 1 and 2, 1 and 2. <laughs> we wait for the permission and we hope we can have these uh, language tests uh, starting in March next year. The whole children class is prepared for the, the German test from the German government. And, and the, the adult classes, the adult classes are people who are interested in German because of their heritage. Some are interested because they want to research their family history. Some people are there just because they like languages. And we have age range from what, about 20 oh, up to 80. But the adults do not per se to, uh, prepare for a test. No. They can then do uh, the Goethe test, uh, but not because nothing is available here in St. Louis. They would need to go to Chicago. So we don't really prepare for it, but the books themselves prepare for these German tests, the Goethe test, for example. And what is it like for, uh, let's say, a school-aged child who wants to take German um, at your Saturday school? What kind of classes would they have? Is this like strictly just book stuff, or is it immersion, or what kind of setup do you have? It's good to note first that our children start when they're like seven years old. So we want to really have them in, at a very young age. Because all our, our beginner classes are usually children 7 to 10. So when they come in as a high schooler, then hopefully they already had a German at, um, at a public school or a private school. So we are a little different than a, a normal public school, as that the children grow or go through the levels in our school when they're 7 years old. And then with 14, they hopefully can then take the German language exams. And with 16, 16, the DSD too. So we, we need, we, uh, usually children who are younger apply or come to our school. 
Mm-hmm. And we have two kindergarten classes so that we can practically already have the younger children grow really into our school. Yeah, and we have we have children who are uh, whose parents are German. They're learning, they're speaking German at home. And then we have children whose parents uh, are interested in German and send their children to school. So two different levels of entry language skill is involved. Which is re- really reflected these two different language levels in our kindergarten classes. So we have two kindergarten classes. One is for bilingual children and one is for children who just start to learn German. But then in our classes itself, we combine them then again. Once they can uh, read and write in English, they usually start with the A1 class. And then we use a normal book. So we have sort of a more traditional setup as a, as a school where we use books from Germany. And so there's no English in it. With the book, it's, it's not really immersion, but uh, the children learn very quickly that there's not a lot of English help. The teacher helps, obviously, explaining grammar or so, and that's in English. But the higher the children go then, so after they are maybe 12 years old, the class is pretty much run in, in German. Uh, what textbook do you use? For the children, we use Deutsche Profis and uh, Magnet Neu. These are all textbooks from Germany. Okay, and the adults use a... Der Berliner Platz, Neu, Eins und Zwei. Most students have a long-term goal in that they want to speak German within five years or so. And their reason is because they have family over in Germany or they do genealogy. That's a, a big part of it. I take the C1 class myself as a student. And the, we have a group of people who sign up every year, year after year after year. Our purpose really is a social purpose. It's to keep our language skills refreshed and alive. But it's also a social interaction for us. The group that I go with, we go to lunch at, after class on Saturdays every week. And then we have a sort of after class social hour. So it's sort of like a stuntish. For me, it's very important to have the practice each week of speaking German for three hours. When I first started five or six years ago, that class, I had to, I understood quite well, but I hadn't spoken in so long that I was really hesitant and not fluent at that point. And now I can get up in front of the class and give a lecture or talk or report without notes or with just a few notes, which I couldn't do five years ago. Yeah, that's an important point that many adult stu- uh, students come for their social reasons. Yeah. They just want to be with a, within a group. They learn better in a group setting, yeah. and they just learn to see you know, other people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you make friends. You know. yeah. yeah, so just something a little bit more structured, like if you're trying to teach yourself German at home or review your German, mm-hmm. you can go to the Saturday school and help pick up on that and kind of get things a little bit more organized than what you might have if you yeah. studied at home on your own. Yeah, and the conversation is way better. So in the higher, with the higher levels, the students also talk German, preferably during the breaks, yeah. and they can speak German through obviously in in conversation exercises. And that you cannot have at home when you just uh, do it by yourself, mm-hmm. or you can have it with a tutor. But it's always the same person then talking to you. And so with the students, you can have different conversation partners. How many students do you have right now? So because of COVID, obviously, we had around uh, around a hundred. It's usually half children, half adults. But usually we have 160 plus. Have you done anything digitally since COVID, uh, or are you still in person classes? And- no, we haven't had no in person classes this year. Okay, so it's been all online. It's been an adjustment, but I think we've handled it pretty well. We lost a lot of people because they didn't want to do the online version, and mm-hmm. uh, one of our teachers wouldn't do online, for instance. And so the enrollment was down thirty percent this year. The students who who did the finally then the online, they really liked it, especially the adults. Yeah. The children were a little bit yeah. more yeah. challenging. <laughs> some of the older adults, like me and some of our other older adults, don't like to drive at night. So the Thursday night class in this coming year, we're going to continue online. Yeah. So those people will be more comfortable. Yeah, on uh, the Thursday night online format than they would if they were coming to the school in person. Yeah, we have now a nice uh, choice for everyone, either Thursday night online or in person on Saturday mornings. Yeah. I have one student in my class from uh, Columbia, and she couldn't come to the class if it were held in person. So, and I hope we will be able to attract more people who are not near, not living near St. Louis. So you are planning on opening this up to people who aren't in St. Louis if you're doing the online version? I think anybody who wants to can enroll online. You know, I don't think we have any limitations no, on that. No, not at all. How many teachers do you have right now? We have 13 teachers if all classes run. How many of them are 
native speakers? Oh, well, it, it may be five to seven. It depends. But we have uh, native speakers as the teachers, and we have uh, certified German teachers as teachers. And we also have uh, Americans who just very speak very well German, have maybe had a few stays in Germany. What is the long-term and the short-term goal of the German school in St. Louis? Well, we for sure would like to grow more, so we always um, invite more students into the school. And, and we also would like to run these German government exams. Um, and then we want to build on our children classes. So we want to make it really attractive for students from public schools to come to us and prepare for the German exam. Because the German exam uh, has many benefits. For example, if you think of studying in Germany, the DSD1 uh, certificate is a, a necessary language requirement to go to a student colleague in Germany. That's a one-year pre preparatory class for the university. But if you succeed in passing the DSD2 exam, that's already your language requirement to directly enter into the university. Yeah, actually, two of our students are, are one of them is currently in Berlin, and the other is going to mm -hmm. Hamburg. Hamburg. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are both going to be studying at the university. And one of the major perks that I see anyway is that, you know, I have two kids who are growing up that are going to eventually have to pay $40,000 yeah, for yeah, an American yeah, university, yeah. but um, I'm doing an online master's right now, and it's about a quarter of the cost, um, and that's even for a foreign student to mm -hmm. study in Germany. That's one of the major perks that I see. And the other thing that we, uh, we are trying to do is offer German for students who go to schools where German is no longer offered. And that's uh, a lot of schools have dropped German as a foreign language. So we want to be able to offer an alter alternative to those people who are interested. Yeah, it's good to have an alternative that they can still go and learn German if they really want to. And then there are a lot of uh, students here where they have uh, bilingual parents. One of the parents is German, and they also need the, the certificate to show that they have the correct German level. Even so, they're Germans, they mm -hmm. still need to take that exam to show their proficiency yeah, in German. And you have to be able to know, you have to know the grammar. Mm -hmm. Speaking a language doesn't prepare you for the tests that are required, so I mean, you have to know more than just be able to speak it. That's where bilingual children who have not a regular school class in German, that's usually where they need help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because speaking goes well, listening goes usually well, but once they need to start writing, there's mm -hmm. a lot of issues. <laughs> yeah, my daughter is eight now, and uh, I've been speaking German to her since she was born, and mm -hmm. so she understands everything that I say to her. She understands German just fine. She can watch TV shows in German, but if I ask her to say something in German, she probably can't produce that language mm -hmm. for her. I know she can't write it or read it, but the understanding is there. It's just we got to build on more of those building blocks, and a school like this would be fantastic for her. And, you know, kids want to be like their peers. Mm -hmm. And so your kids who are born into bilingual families frequently resist learning the language that's not the language of their peers. So yeah. We often have that set up, not only with the teachers that they bring their children to school, but also mm -hmm. with the parents, that the parents send the children to school and uh, the other parents who is maybe not German or who would like to speak German goes to a parallel class in the adult classes. Mm -hmm. And so both are busy for three hours, and so there's just one drive to it and one drive back, so you don't need to, like, you know, mm -hmm. save a little bit on the driving. So the number one question that I always have online is, how do I learn German? So I, I do a lot of videos where I say, you know, you can use this website or that website, or you can use these tools to help you learn German, but what is the, the one tip that you might give to German learners for people who want to learn German, whether it be in the St. Louis area or elsewhere? Um, how do you learn German? What do you do? I would recommend going to the Deutsche Welle, and they have a lot of, it's all free, you don't have to register, but they have really, really good uh, educational programs. We've been using one called Nikos Weg in my A2 class, and I think it's excellent. I wish we, I'd had it when I was learning German. It's, it's that good. So I would say anything the Deutsche Welle has to offer is good. And of course, there are n numerous things on YouTube. Easy German is one, mm -hmm. and um, Jenny or Anya. Yeah, learning Gen German with Jenny. Yeah, yeah. And then there's German with Anya. She's much more 
energetic in her videos than I usually am. Um, <laughs> and yeah, there's there's quite a few good YouTubers out there that uh, I'll leave a link in the description for the uh, video that I have about recommendations for YouTubers. Generally, uh, I think you need to learn regularly uh, your language when you learn one. So once a week, like here in the school, we, we might have school only once a week, but it's for three hours. And then we have for sure homework. So the students have one more session by, by themselves and then hopefully one more time during the week where they can study vocabulary or so. Beside regularly always uh, learning the language and studying it, you need to try to find opportunities to speak it or listen to it. So anything anything helps just to immerse yourself into the language. So not only through the school, but through just listening. And Netflix has a, a number of movies in German. You can find those and watch them. They are difficult to understand, but you can get them with uh, uh, subtitles, mm -hmm. and then maybe you can follow them all right. But it's a pretty high level of language usually. Yeah, and there's uh, the Kinderkanal, the Kika mm -hmm. in Germany. They have a lot of their online stuff. So if you're, you know, one of the younger age children, mm -hmm. um, Kika is a fantastic way to immerse them in something like Meine Freund and Connie or children's shows like mm -hmm. Sesame Street is on there in German mm -hmm. and those would be a great opportunity for those students too. Are there any other schools that are kind of doing the same type of thing that you are in other cities? You already mentioned uh, one in Chicago. I think there are um, quite a few actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, every yeah. bigger American city has uh, Saturday schools. They were all founded just like ours uh, with the refugees coming over from the after the Second World War and there is even a like a, a German Saturday school conference, so there's an umbrella organization for these Saturday schools too. And we are also connected through the German government because most of us are doing these German government exams. And so the Zentrale Fachstelle für Auslandsschulwesen um, is uh, supporting all the Saturday schools here in America, but also all over the world. Is there anywhere that we can go online to find like a centralized list of these schools, or is it just you know, search in your city, oh, city German learning near me, and see what you find. Mostly, we all go on with the name German Saturday School. So, yeah, that's exactly what you do: German Saturday School, or go to the German Saturday School conference. Otherwise, yeah, just Google in your city German Saturday School. And your website is GermanSchoolSDL.org. Those are all of the questions that I had for you guys. Um, do you have any questions that you want to ask me? Anything that you're kind of curious about, either with a, what I'm doing on YouTube or uh, in the classroom? What uh, levels of German are you teaching in your school, and how many German teachers do you have? Uh, we currently have two German teachers. I teach German 1 and 2, so I have four classes a day, two German 1s, two German 2s. Our 3 and 4 classes are dual credit classes with the local community college. We actually have to have a master's degree in order to teach the upper levels. Uh -huh. So we do have another German teacher. She teaches 3 and 4. Um, there's only one class of each of those right now. So we have two German teachers, just Mia with uh, 1 and 2 and Frau Haus with 3 and 4. And so is Frau Haus part-time? She also teaches geography, so she oh, does okay. uh, three classes of geography and two classes of German. Yeah. This is a new sh uh, shirt, and you can uh, order it online. It comes with different uh, sentences in the front, and in the back is that the German school logo. Yeah, I may have to pick one of those up. Uh, thank you for hanging out with me today and uh, mm -hmm. doing this interview, and maybe I'll be teaching for you soon. and. Uh, maybe I'll send my daughter over your direction. Okay. But if anybody uh, online is looking for them, they are uh, the German school in St. Louis. If you just search for uh, German school or German Saturday school uh, near you, there's probably one in your area and uh, would be definitely a great opportunity for you to learn German in your area.